Hi guys, um, hope everything's going well for you. Today we are going to be working on another writing assignment and we're still gonna use the RAD strategy, which is R, restate the question, A, answer the question, D, provide details from the text to support your answer, and then a second detail from the text to support your answer. Um, what I'm noticing though, when I'm reading your work is that you are forgetting to explain the details that you select. And let me tell you, this is actually the most important thing that you can do to write a strong, convincing argument, okay? Evidence cannot stand on its own. You have to guide your reader into believing and thinking the exact same thing that you believe and think. Everyone doesn't draw the same conclusions when they read or think about something in a text. It is your job as the writer to guide them where you want them to go. Uh, let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, let's look at this partial paragraph that I've written to answer this question. Here's this question um, over a video you haven't seen yet, or maybe you have, but not for my class. It says, the question says, at the end of this video, the village is destroyed. What is your opinion regarding what happened to the village? Support your answer with evidence from the video. Okay, so what I wrote to answer, let's see. I wrote the village deserved to be destroyed at the end of the video. During the video, the villagers attacked the rock giant because he knocked down their building. All right, so let me just analyze this. Um, all right, restate the question. Let's see. All right. And this, what I'm highlighting right here in red, this is directly um, my R, right? It's restating my question. The answer is pretty short. It's just the section that I'm going to highlight in blue. All right. No, I messed that up. Let me try again. Highlight in blue. Okay. Um, and then during the video, the villagers attacked the giant because he knocked down their building. Um, that is a piece of evidence. Okay, that is something that happened in the video that would prove my point. But now I'm done. So let me just have you think about this for a second. If this is true, if this is all I'm going to write, and you haven't seen the video and you're just reading this, does it seem like the village deserved to be destroyed? Not really. What it seems like is that a giant attacked them and they retaliated. And they hopefully would win this scenario if it were real, which obviously can't be because giants aren't real. That's not the point. The point is, it doesn't even seem right now like that village deserved anything other than to be able to protect itself from this evil rock giant. So we're gonna watch the video now and I'm going to show you how some explanation can really save this answer. Okay, one second. Okay. Okay, so now that we've seen the video, we can tell that the rock giant, he wasn't attacking them. He was trying really, really hard to save them, right? 
and they attacked him for no reason. He worked really hard to protect them and they just ignored that. So you need this additional piece of evidence to understand what really went on in this passage. Let me explain this. What could I say? I could say, um, they completely ignored the fact that he was trying so incredibly hard to protect them from the falling rock. I could say a lot of different things here, right? I could say that he had run down the mountain and he held it up with just his own strength. I could say, I don't have to say it exactly how I said it, I could say it different ways. But I have to explain this evidence or else the whole thing does not make sense. And it does now. If you read just this part, the village deserved to be destroyed at the end of the video. During the video, the villagers attacked the rock giant because he knocked down their building. They completely ignored the fact that he was trying so incredibly hard to protect them from the falling rock. That gives you the context you need, and it shows me why that piece of evidence helps to prove my point, okay? And that's what we need to do when we're doing writing all of the time. So let's look at our assignment for today. We have a reading passage that I have already read to you guys during Read Aloud, so you can go listen to the Read Aloud if you want instead, but I've got the passage here for you, okay? And what it says is read the passage and answer the following questions. So at the end, there are two questions. There's this one, describe Sylvia's mood and support your answer with evidence from the text. And then the question that you're going to need to make an answer for here is in the passage, Syl reveals that she and Autumn are in a romantic relationship. Evaluate the relationship between these two characters. Are things going well or is there a strain in the relationship? Support your answer with evidence from the text. So that's gonna be what you're gonna work on. While you read through this, you'll be thinking about that, okay? My question again, describe Sylvia's mood. So first thing I did, is the R, okay? In the passage, Sylvia's mood, that is in red. My answer is that she is depressed. Same sentence, doesn't sound awkward. I restated and I answered. Then I have some evidence here. In the text, Sylvia is considering how happy Autumn sounds while she talks to Asha. She feels left out and thinks to herself this. All right, this right here is all my evidence, okay? It's more than one sentence because you always have to give context for any quote that you bring into your text. And there's no rule that says that any one of these things needs to be just one sentence. Okay, so this piece of evidence is actually two sentences. I am giving a little bit of context to the reader and I'm putting in my quotes that made me think this. All right, so she feels like I'm left with bleak opportunity and nothing more. And then I went ahead and I explained it. Sylvia is feeling as though she has nothing without Autumn. That explains a little bit, okay? Part of the reason that she's feeling so despondent, despondent is another word for depressed, is that she feels as though she cannot go to the college of her dreams even though she has been accepted. All right, so this here, it says her mother is ill, and so she believes she must stay home to take care of her. This is not a quote, but it is paraphrasing something that is said in the text. This is another piece of evidence. It's my proof that she's depressed. So, so far my proof is this quote where she says that um, she's gonna be left with bleak opportunity and nothing more, it's bleak town. And then she's depressed also because she can't go to her favorite college and because her mother's sick, okay? But I didn't finish there. I have to give evidence to prove my point. So my 
that evidence. I, I need to explain my evidence if I'm going to really prove my point. So I wrote, since she has worked hard for this, having to give up her place must be very distressing. I am reminding the reader that what I'm talking about is the emotion that she's feeling here. She's depressed. It must be distressing. If she's depressed, she feels as though she has nothing. These are my thoughts and I'm explaining my evidence in order to prove that my answer is correct. And that's your job when you are writing answers for these questions. If you're having a hard time trying to think about how to create these sentences that are going to explain your evidence, I listed just a couple of sentence starters that could help you, um, including this evidence means, this shows that, this supports my answer because, this detail is important because, or maybe even the evidence suggests. You'll notice I didn't necessarily use these sort of sentence starters in mine. I said since, and I started straight up with Sylvia. So these aren't the only way to start explaining your evidence, but they are prompts that you can use that could help you. And there's no shame in using these to help you until you become stronger with explaining your evidence. All right, um, that's gonna be it for now. Go ahead and get started on your writing. Good luck and contact me if you need any help. Thank you.